Thank you, uh, Daniel. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Good morning. We'll start on this agenda uh, this morning. Uh, can I welcome uh, three of our uh, non-executive councillors with us this morning? Uh, Councillor Jabour, Councillor Swanick, and Councillor Haslam. Nice to see you here in person, Paul. Normally, we expect you on the screen. <laughs> Um, and also in the corner, we have Anthony James from the Scarborough News, local democracy report. Welcome. Uh, and we have two public uh, speakers at the other corner of the room. Uh, and I've agreed with them that I will bring them in to speak at the item for which they want to, uh, to address us, which is the Whitby Schools um, item. So let's move uh, straight into the agenda. Are you happy that I signed the minutes of the meeting of the 21st of March. I'm seeing nods around the room. Has anybody got any declarations of interest? And then public participation, as I say, will bring the speakers in at the relevant time. So that takes us into item four, lowering the age range of Overdale Community Primary School. And Annabelle, I'll come to you, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, as you'll see, um, the governing body of Overdale uh, Primary School has asked the, us, the local authority, to propose a lowering of the age of their school from 3211 to 2211 in order to offer education for two year old children. Overdale Community Primary School currently provides education for children from three years in its nursery, and the school is now proposing to provide places for two year olds as an extension of the existing provision. This report is the outcome of a public consultation carried out by the governors of Overdale Community Primary School, and they are now seeking to approve for the publication of proposals and statutory notices to lower the age of Overdale Community Primary School. Happy to any questions if there are any, Chair. Okay, anybody got any questions or comments to make on this item? <laughs> a little bit less uh, field, and I noticed on the um, and I've, I've, I've just noticed the equality <coughs> impact assessment, and I'm sure it's a standard form, or I'm sure that's the response that we'll get. But we are talking about a primary school here, um, and I see that we've assessed gender reassignment. How, is that because it is a statutory equality impact assessment form? I, I know it's a controversial subject, but um, it was our okay. get I'd like to answer that, Amanda. Uh, and it'd be an obvious response, I know. It's a standard form, and on this uh, form, we've said no impact is anticipated. It's not all of the criteria relevant all of the time. Uh, uh, right. I looked at that. Thank you. Yeah, Derek, please. I, I welcome this and congratulate um, Susan and Annabelle with this and, and request to lower this age because I think it gives an excellent opportunity. Um, for the people in and around the Eastfield area to give them the best start in life to get them into some kind of... Yeah. yeah, I endorse what Derek said and I'm happy to second it. That on Saturday, and I have to say, a brilliant school. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous to see such a, a large new build in that yeah. area serving that population. Uh, Sorry, if I may come back. Later. And that, that all came about because of the planning application at Middle Deep Dale was part of was part of that mm -hmm. development as well. Okay, so it's been proposed and seconded. So can I can I just take agreement around the table of this? Yep, thank you. And it will come back to us in due course. Yes, thank yeah. you, Chair. Okay, so can we move on then please to item five, which is the main item on the agenda this morning. And I'm going to go straight to the public speakers, please. Uh, my agenda here says Sue Crossland is going to speak first. Is that correct, sir? And would you like to come to the, uh, the table, please? So if I stand or sit, do you just, just whatever you're most comfortable with, I'd, I'd suggest sitting. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Sue Crossland, and I am co-chair of Governors of the Group Extended Partnership, as well as a parent of a child at Estelle School. Having had two children who each chose different secondary schools, I can appreciate the desire for choice. However, also having the responsibility to oversee the strategic direction and finances of the two schools in the partnership, I fully understand the need for action at this time. I moved to the area just as the 2016 consultation to close Estelle was getting underway. 
and I heard a lot of comments from people at the time. But one letter from a former pupil at the school struck a chord with me. The young lady described herself for an alternative form of choice. She wanted a greater choice of subjects at GCSE that just wasn't available in a small school. And this is what we aim to offer the students of Whitby if we amalgamate SL and Cavan College to one school. With reducing intakes at both schools, the options available to the students will also become reduced as class sizes will be too small in some subjects to make them viable, which in turn could mean students look elsewhere at schools that provide a wider choice of subjects, further reducing intake. For me, it is important for my children and all children to get the most out of their education and have the opportunity to learn subjects that inspire them and excite them. And I know that all children are different, with different interests, and the ability to offer a wide and inspirational curriculum is a great opportunity. And it's not just about the curriculum. The potential for extracurricular opportunities can be expanded with a large cohort of students. Clubs that may not have been able to run in either school because of low numbers may have enough uptake to thrive. Bits and activities that require minimum numbers may be easier to arrange, providing other <laughs> students that may not otherwise be possible. So I agree that our students need to have a choice. But it doesn't have to be the choice of which physical site to attend. We want to give them a greater choice of subjects and opportunities. I know that numbers at Whitby Sixth Form are currently low. And this is something that we want to change. As a governing board, we were already discussing the pathway through Key Stage 3 and 4 at the two schools into Key Stage 5 at Whitby Sixth Form. If the schools are amalgamated, then this pathway becomes a seamless transition from Year 7 to Year 13 with curriculum roadmaps that help students to progress in their chosen subjects and onto university or elsewhere. And we want our school communities to be involved in any transition. This can be an exciting opportunity for staff and students to work together to create a vibrant new school that they can be proud of, an exciting opportunity to forge relationships and networks with their peers, an exciting opportunity to bring together the strong communities of Estelle School and Caden and College to be better and stronger and acting now means that when this year's Year 7s come to choose their GCSE options, they won't be limited by non-viable class sizes. As year groups get smaller, budgets won't be squeezed further, but every student will have their chance to thrive, to experience everything we can offer, and know that they were part of that change. Annabelle, I believe you have a response. Yes, I have. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for your statement and for attending today's meeting in person. As you are a Federation Governor, your role in bringing this proposal to amalgamate Cadeland College Whitby and Estelle School to the Council are understood and the reasons for doing so are clearly set out in the report for today's meeting. Your comments about the change in pupil numbers, the impact that this has on viability of classes and the relevance to this curriculum choice are also covered in today's report. You have referred to this proposal as an exciting proposition and governors have set out their vision in Appendix 5E of today's report. Your comments about the importance of ensuring the transition arrangements, bringing students and staff together into one community, are also referenced to in the, are referenced to in the inclusion and in the conclusion of the report, sorry, where it is highlighted that this would need to be a key priority for school leaders should this proposal go ahead. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Annabelle. So we have the right to a short supplementary question or comment if you'd like to take it. Thank you. OK, thank you. So in that case, could I invite Terry <coughs> to come to the table, please? Over to you. Yes. Thank you. Right. Um, so it is essential that North Yorkshire's residents and businesses can have confidence in the transparency and the accountability of the new council. That was quoted by you, Mr. Wes. Yeah, indeed. The report that you have in front of you is not a true representation of the educational system in place in Whitby, and unfortunately, it lacks detailed transparency and most of all accountability. Four governors from a governing body which did not follow DFB guidelines in its setting up. Failure to notify the Secretary of State on two separate occasions and not updating the Get Information About Schools website until the 31st of March this year. <coughs> we have to follow the correct place procedure. There is also a request for the reinstatement of the instrument of government for Estella School. We are still waiting for a response. 
We had to fight the executive head teacher for the confidential minutes, and it took 47 days instead of 20. These were damning. Ms. Newbold took to the governors the model of the schools to be on one site, including staffing model. There was talk of what happens when the schools are inspected and return inadequate. That is how bad standards have slipped under Whitby Secondary Partnership. Two good schools are now heading for inadequate reports or required, requires improvement at best. There is also evidence that the government, governors lied at the public meeting. £30,000 has been taken from the 11 to 16 education at Estelle School and given as a contribution to the Whitby Sixth Form. This, along with federation costs, has left the school unable to afford the science. How is this best for the education of our children? This is after the Sixth Form received £250,000 from North Yorkshire Coast Opportunity Area, another request two years later for more funding and £250,000 from North Yorkshire County Council. We want what is best for the education of our children and all Whitby children in the future. These decreasing numbers are not solved in this proposal. 11 to 16 children need choice. School is not a one-size-fits-all. Whitby has had at least two 11-plus schools for 70 years, and it works. The children weren't even classed as consultees on the document. It is their future, our future decision makers, workers, employers. Yet NYCC and the governors did not engage with them for anyone else about their futures. Two smaller schools working together while embracing their differences, decreasing numbers and budget deficits are not a problem, as both schools are near to capacity and future decreasing numbers can be managed. All sporting facilities are retained, job security for staff and not management heavy like present. Strong leadership at the top drives up standards. This is what Whitby has lacked for years. Okay, thank you. And Annabelle, would you like to give the response? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for your statement and for attending in person today. Thank you. As stated in the report, governors are responsible for the education of pupils mm. at both Estelle School and Cajun College and have brought forward this recommendation to amalgamate Estelle School and Cademan College Whitby in the interest of pupils across both schools in the Federation. The amalgamation proposal aims to address the three linked factors which governors identified as challenges. Low pupil numbers, significant fin financial challenges at both schools, and imperative to give the best education and curriculum for the young people of Whitby. You have commented on the use of financial resources and as set out in the report, the Whitby Secondary Partnership shares a number of human and other resources across the two schools within the Federation. And consequently, there is a need for transfer of funding between the two school budgets in respect of these shared resources. Governors confirmed that previously consideration had been given to making a payment to the sixth form budget from the Estelle school budget. But during Estelle budget review meetings, it was later decided that this would not be carried out. Pupil numbers that have decreased over time drive school budgets. Both schools have numerous financial challenges to address and the current financial outlook for the two schools as separate institutions forecast deficits. The report also notes the view of governors that any strategy to address the low pupil numbers and financial challenges without moving to become one school across the two sites would hamper education and curriculum improvement. The report notes that an initial model demonstrates the potential for the amalgamated school to achieve 1.3 million savings by 26-27. The report being considered today reproduces nearly 600 responses from the public, with many consultees agreeing that change is necessary to meet the challenges facing the two schools. This consultation has listened to the voices of pupils, parents, staff, residents and other interested parties expressed at the two public consultation meetings and through written responses and a petition. It is acknowledged that as a result of this proposal being implemented, there would only be one secondary school in Whitby. Historically, we know that the former Whitby Community College was the only provider of education for 14 to 18 year olds within the town. And the secondary partnership's vision is to offer a wider curriculum, increasing the choices for pupils 
particularly Key Stage 4, which is the GCSE year, and preparing them to progress to a range of outcomes at 16 plus and 19 plus. The proposal for the amalgamated school focuses on it being able to provide a wider curriculum offer than currently provided at either school. And the intention is that this should enable more pupils to be successful in the subjects and pathways of their choice. Thank you, Annabelle. You have the opportunity to make a supplement, a short supplementary statement. I do wonder how you're saying that this will broaden the curriculum. You can offer a hundred subjects to offer that, but if the blocking and the timetabling does not work, you are still not going to offer the children the wide variety. Where are the staffing coming from? And the classrooms, the more subjects you have, the more like room you need, the more teachers you need, and the timetabling does not always fit. There is always going to be children who are going to miss out on their first choice. And with the where it is, a lot of 16 plus leave with me to move to Gisborough, to Milford. I've got two children myself who have left with me to go to Gisborough and Milford. So that's because it's part of the progression. It's having that independence and breaking out of the shell from this 11-year-old then. If you're still being taught by the same teachers when you're 17 who remember you at 11, you're always going to be compared. You're always going to be compared to your siblings. And a lot of children in Whitby, if they're big families, they want to break out. They want to be them. Thank you. Do we want to deal with that now or do you want to deal with that in the body of the report? Um, I'm happy to respond now about the right. curriculum offer. So yeah. it is the That's schools cool. that would be responsible <clears> for the curriculum offer for the um, council. But to speak on their behalf, um, when a school offers a set of subjects for GCSE, for example, they have to have the right qualified specialist teachers to be able to offer those subjects. So in some smaller schools, that can be a challenge for them to do that. They also then need to have sufficient pupils to select that subject to make it being warrant, uh, warrant it being viable to run as a GCSE subject over a two year period. And if they don't have that, it can make some subjects inviable and therefore the subjects won't run. So the intention of having a greater staff body does allow teachers to teach their own specialist subject rather than, uh, for example, a PE teacher teaching a science subject, which might be their second qualification route but might not be their specialist area so it's to try and reduce the times that that happens and <coughs> thank you amanda so now we can move on to the third statement this is from joyce stango who isn't present but i understand that terry and you're going to read out yeah, that, right. that. <laughs> <laughs> so whitby community school network would like to request an immediate full and transparent review of future of education in the Whitby catchment area before any decision is made and a school closure is considered. The evidence put forward by a limited number of governors to support the present proposal does not address the three key issues highlighted, nor the community issues such as green spaces, playing fields and transport issues. We fully understand the financial constraints of running and maintaining three school buildings, but the reasoning behind the closure, uh, the closure proposed is flawed to say the least. The long-term plan must ultimately lead to one purpose-built education <laughs> school. If the maximum amount of funding is to be retained for educational purposes, all significant decisions such as this one should bear in mind the long-term climate target, which is reduced transport implications, energy efficient buildings, training for retrofitting buildings. And this proposal by its short term nature makes no assessment of how this will assist in achieving the goals. It is essential that the various strategic directives are congruent and work one with another to achieve the overall objectives. Which is an urban settlement settled in a sparsely populated rural area 
with very limited educational and skills training for over 16s slash adults, nor free public transport for over 16s. We wish to ensure a fully informed proposal can be made by the council, governors, parents and community prior to any school closure being recommended if deemed necessary. Without the read, if the current proposal goes ahead, it will be closely followed by the closure of the sixth form school and we can not see how these can be increased easily. We are somewhat surprised that the closing Estelle School has been submitted once again, as this was overruled for on the previous two occasions, circa 2010 and 2016. Why, in all of this time, has North Yorkshire County Council and the school governors, with the help of the community, not prepared a plan for the future of sustainable education in this catchment area? Where the decline in school numbers has been known for some time, the age of the buildings means they are expensive to maintain and difficult to eat. Educational standards in this area are below both North Yorkshire and national levels. Virtually all skills and adult education has now ceased in Wigley District. We would urge the executive team reviewing this, the above proposal to view all the schools in Whitby and assess for themselves what is required in the short term. But bear in mind the long term needs of this area if we want to make North Yorkshire a success. Well, the response yes, please. Um, Thank you again for reading that on behalf of the Whitby Community Network. Thank you, Terry Ann. Um, the governor's response, uh, the governor's response, sorry. <laughs> the companies have clearly referenced the low numbers, financial challenges, and imperative to provide a high quality education for the pupils of Whitby. Governors have stated that their vision for secondary education in Whitby is that there would be continued to be, sorry, is that there would continue to be education for 16, 18 year olds as part of an amalgamated school. Governors described at the public meetings how their long-term curriculum planning involved ensuring that there will be a seamless transition from 6, 11 to 16 through into the sixth form for all pupils in Whitby who choose this route. The council does not receive capital funding to re remove existing schools places in new accommodation. The Department of Education periodically runs capital programmes where funding is provided to rebuild existing schools. Neither of these existing schools have been selected for the most recent programme due to not meeting the criteria set out by the DfD, the Department of Education. If the proposal to amalgamate to create one school across two sites is approved, a new, a single new build 11 to 18 secondary school for Whitby could be created by the Department of Education. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Annabelle. Did you want to make a supplementary um, comment? Yeah. Um, you say they address the following numbers, but the sixth form at the moment is on a site that is for, has a capacity of 483, has numerous playing fields, an astro turf, used to have a capacity before like the alterations of 550. And you, the governors have even said themselves that moving the 11 to 16 off the Normandy site is not actually feasible because it does not have the outdoor space that is necessary for the children to have now under DFE guidelines. It has the least amount of space. It has no sports facilities. But we are still going to push forward the governor still wants to push forward with 137 children in a sixth form that has all the all the facilities that the 11 to 16 year olds need. SL has the sports facilities, it has the playing field, it has a 3G pitch. That is what the 11 to 16s need and under DFB guidelines have to have. And this proposal does not fit in with DFB guidelines now for that. So the children will be failed. They will have to cross a main road to do PE every lesson. Okay, thank you. 
Do you want to address that now or as part of the report? I think it will come up in the next statement, so it'll be answered oh, there, I think. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so thank you for, for those two. The next uh, three questions, four, five and six, none of the... Uh, None of the statement makers are here, but they're going to be read out by Daniel Barry. We're going to do all three together, and then Annabelle, you're going to give a competence. You're going to capture all the issues that have been there. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so Daniel, over to you, please. Thank you, Chair. So the uh, first is from Mrs Lucy Brown. It reads as follows. I'm a parent with children in year 13, one daughter in year 9, and one in year 6, and one in year 1. I have previously been Chair of Governors. I'm currently a teacher in mainstream and centre education and a partner in a large business. I would like you all to be aware that if the closure of Eskdale goes ahead, of the real dangers faced by the education of all children in Whitby. The proposal by the Governors has not identified any other proposals. It has not looked at send children or provisions as currently parents at CCW with children who have send needs are having their children put into the CCW behaviour unit. Referrals are being missed and all these serious issues need addressing. I'd like to ask a few questions to the chair of the exec committee uh, members. This is not an Esker, Eskdale versus CCW battle, but you are an active exec committee body. Where is the evidence of Eskdale that Eskdale site is not a suitable school? Where is your evidence of other options explored by the full governor's body? There is not any. We ran a 14 to 18 school on one site and this worked. When um, WCC merged with Cayman and also problems occurred, they had to move children from WCC to Cayman School to use the Astro. Very time consuming. Also a big health and safety um, of safeguarding issue. Staff also had to move sites, which meant that children would be left uh, by cover supervisors. Bethany was educated at WCC, um, Adam Lith, etc. Where is the sporting facilities going to be if you say yes to closing Estale? Estale School has excellent off road parking, it has a turning circle, specialist turn lifts to accommodate all children with needs. You are taking away the green fields, the healthy eco school, and putting too many children into the CCW site, as suggested by the BAP. The CCW site would have too many children on and no green fields to play sport or allow children to have access to the outdoors. By allowing the governor's proposal, you're taking away not just the choice of education schools, but also the health and well being of all children in Whitby. Another major worry is when to be send children are crossing the border into Redcar and Cleveland to be educated. Why is there not a specialist send unit in Whitby? Why is there also not a specialist behaviour unit with qualified staff to ensure all children of Whitby the right to be educated, not transported at taxpayers' costs all over the county? Not just financial costs, but also health and wellbeing. Please, executive members, listen to the proponent, the people of Whitby, who are also educated individuals who want the best for all children and not a quick fix. I'd like to propose you keep Estelle School open and make specialist sen and behaviour uh, unit there. Sorry, make a specialist sen and behaviour unit there to educate all the children that are being missed. And close the CCW Mayfield Road site and transfer the CCW children to the old Caderman school site to make it an 11 to 18 and have the green fields there, the AstroTurf, and keep the 6 form. NYC could dispose of the old Mayfield Road site. This would save money and keep the two schools in Whitby. The money from the sale of the Mayfield Road site instead of the other two schools. We need your support for the education of Whitby. Keep Eskdale, keep CCW, dispose of the Mayfield Road site. This would allow sport and healthy children to develop and not be squashed into one small old Thank you for listening. You got to. Okay, thank you. Stop this. So the next question is from a Mr. David Bradley. The decision to propose an amalgamation of the two secondary schools has been taken as a very spy a very small group of people and is very much against the wishes of local people. 
The original proposal had a ridiculous time scale and involved very few stakeholders. In short, it was a classic model of how not to manage significant change in education. Educators constantly urge their learners to, to reach for the stars. This pro proposal is devoid of ambition and will put learners at risk as they cross Mayfield Road to access sporting facilities at the former Cademan School, denies parents' choice given to them through the 1988 Education Act. At the very least, this whole matter should be reconsidered by an independent body who will listen to the stakeholders. The third one, please, okay, Thank you. So this one is from Mrs. Florence Sawyer. I read with interest and disgust the agenda item five document for next week's executive meeting. I would have thought that after all the legal irregularities and lies that we have had to endure during the consultation period, that you would have learned that deception is not professional and will eventually be found out. In particular, two elements of the response concern me, namely the complete bias of the responses made to concerns and questions and the hiding information and missing minutes of responses. <clears throat> Point one. Where has section four <coughs> table five, the table sets on the options considered prior to consultation? This information was not in the original proposal and not on any slides in the meeting. In fact, it was clear that no other options. It was clear that no other options had <coughs> been discussed prior to the proposal. Despite being announced, the governing body never came back to the meeting with the options. However, now miraculously has appeared, forgive me, I don't believe that they existed until after the public meeting. Under alternatives, there is no discussion about keeping the sixth form in either the Scoresby or the Normanby site, as there is plenty of room for a sixth form the size of Cademans. Governors acknowledge that some pupils would always seek, wish to seek further education further afield. However, that retain a strong belief that for other pupils, that they would benefit from a local sixth form. Yes, agreed. One, they're fitting the size of those choosing Caderman, not an undersubscribed sixth form with not enough choice. They seem to think they can turn around 17 years of ongoing decline in the They haven't to date, there's no evidence that they will, but this has been conveniently overlooked as well. <coughs> there is no mention of the suggestion that extra space could be used at the old St Hilda's RC Primary School, particularly in conjunction with the schools we cite. There is no consideration of the two sides being one at Eskdale and one at Scoresby Normanby. A token comment, sub options which included forming an amalgamated school but on just one side or an alternative pair of sites were also considered, is not good enough when you're making important decisions regarding the future of education at Whitby. Options B to D above would not address the projected budget deficits across both schools. Indeed, many of them would have no impact on the budget at Eskdale School. Nothing has been added as to how these deficits occurred and the maladministration of the governing body. A great deal of evidence is missing from this report concerning their issues, and this, and this is not appropriate. It is totally misleading. If this is not exposed now, it will no doubt be exposed later, which will be far worse. The Whitby Secondary Partnership's vision is to offer a wider curriculum, increasing the choices of pupils, particularly key stage four GCSEs, and preparing them to progress into a range of outcomes at 16 plus and 19 plus. The offering is simply an amalgamation of the current Estelle and Caderman options, and any, any more is unrealistic as a timetable would not allow any more choice. As for advanced levels, this is pie in the sky both facilities-wise and expertise-wise. Again, no evidence. Point two, minutes, namely, Appendix 4A, notes of the 12.30 p.m. public consultation meeting and Appendix 4B notes of the 18.30 p.m. public consultation meeting. I don't know where your minute takers were, but definitely not in the two meetings at a time many others were in. These are not an accurate reflection of what was said, and above all, there's a lot of missing questions and responses. I wouldn't be surprised if your minute takers fell asleep listening to Mr. Henshaw and the other governors regurgitating the same information to different questions 
However, it is not acceptable to present this information. The executive panel, as to the executive panel as being accurate, it is not. A glaring example is Mr. Hentrum stating that Caden College did not have a drugs problem less than a week before there was a serious drugs incident on site. And then when the confidential minutes finally made a limited appearance, it was confirmed in there. Without considerable redactions, it is, if no doubt, really, no doubt could have been mentioned on numerous occasions. At least one response confirms this comment in their submission, and yet the minute taker fails to report the serious issue. Point three, there are many other issues, including no reference to how the amalgamation occurred, the jobs could be allocated. I have no doubt that those in situ would fare better, and reading the Cadem and staff responses, they also likely agree. Yet it states that aware no they are aware of no human resources issues. You also state places of similar sizes do not have choice, but these are less than those that do not, that do, and out of area schools are closer than the Whitby scenario. Forgive me if I'm feeling a pattern of bias here. <coughs> also include considerable respondents, which has exhaustive information, facts and concerns, but I can see no responses in the same way you have taken on board the information presented by governors. I could expand into other issues, but I doubt you will actually take on board the concerns. So in conclusion, I know you tried to convince the attendees of the meeting that this was a fair consultation and not predetermined, but nothing in this response convinces me of those facts. Therefore, I think it would also be important to someone who is independent to check the responses and the results based on what I'm reading. I, I also would like confirmation that my email has been received as I have not been impressed with responses to things. I'm still waiting on a number of complaints regarding WSP lack of professionalism, which NYCC feel unable to respond to. Not an impressive customer service record to say the least. That's the end of the statements. Okay. Thank you, Daniel, for that. So now, Annabella, <coughs> can you for the response? Thank you, Chair. The Governing Board of the Whitby Secondary Partnership has asked the Council to consult on amalgamating Caveman College Whitby and Estelle School in September 2024. The decision to propose the amalgamation was taken by a small yet quarrant group. The Board has a direct responsibility for taking action to improve education outcomes for pupils in their schools, and their proposal sets out their intention to do this. Governors are seeking to move forward with this proposal in good time to achieve a positive outcome for the pupils without delay. The proposal sets out Governor's ambitious vision to provide a wider curriculum offer than currently provided at either school, and in the future this would enable more pupils to be successful in the subjects and pathways of their choice. The issue of sports facilities has been raised. Pupils on the Normanby site will continue to access sporting facilities at the Scoresby site as they do at present, and the school will continue to ensure the safe movement of pupils between the two sites. The selection of the Normanby site for retention is based upon it being the only one of the three sites which offers an opportunity to accommodate all 11 to 16 pupils, and the choice of the Scoresby rather than Estelle as a second site to be retained was based on a number of factors, including the access to the sports facilities and the proximity of the two sites. There is no legal duty to have multiple schools located in a specific area. The consultation proposal does not change parental choice as interpreted in the admissions code. There are a number of towns of comparable size across the county and nationwide that only have one secondary school. Comments about the support Sorry, comments about support for pupils have been raised. Governors have described that as part of the creation of the amalgamated school, there would be a pastoral and inclusive structure which would provide a larger team for pupils to be able to access dedicated members of staff who are responsible for pupil welfare, inclusion and targeted and specialist support. Seeing the work of the SEN teams, alternative provision and the targeted mainstream provision coming together as part of an inclusive hub. This will provide intervention and ongoing support for all pupils, but, specifically, sorry, but specifically those identified with more personalised needs. 
for every child with an health, an education, health and care plan naming either of the two schools, the amalgamation will be considered at the point of their annual review. Any queries or concern can be discussed with either the school special and educational needs coordinator, the North Yorkshire Special Educational Needs Information Advice and Support Service, or with the council's send and inclusion services if required. Any decisions about the future use of the SDEL site will be taken after the determination of the amalgamation proposal. However, the Council will work with all groups using the pitch to ensure all information is taken into account when considering the future of the site, and specifically the 3G pitch. Consultation process has shown that local people hold a wide range of different reviews on the proposal. By the closing date of the 31st of March 2023, the Council had received 463 written consultation responses, plus 104 items of consultation corresponding sent to the Executive Member for Education, Learning and Skills, myself, and 26 items of consultation correspondence to the Council officers. It has not been possible to reply individually to these items of correspondence. However, officers have endeavoured to respond fully to all comments and feedback received during the consultation process in the report to the executive. Okay, thank you, Anna Gal. I mean, clearly there's nobody present to ask any supplementaries uh, on these uh, three points. So, we'll, uh, can I thank the speakers for their uh, attendance as well, and we'll then move uh, into the report itself. So, Annabelle, if you've caught your breath, I'll come back to you and ask you to. Thank you. Before we start this formal part of the meeting, I would firstly like to thank everyone for everybody's contribution involved with the public consultation report. I know how hard everyone has worked, and from our North Yorkshire County Council officers, the school governors, the staff, pupils, and the community of Whitby, I thank you. It has been very emotive at times. Everyone wants the best for the young people of Whitby. In December last year, the governing body set out three linked factors of the reason, reasons for their proposal to amalgamate Cayman College Whitby and Estelle School. Those were low pupil numbers, significant financial challenges at both schools, as each school is subject to a notice of financial concern. This notice is issued by the council to governing boards where, in the opinion of officers, actions need to be taken to safeguard the financial position of the council or the school and an imperative to give the best education and curriculum to the young people of Whitby. Some points to highlight. Many of the concerns expressed in response to the consultation agreed that the change was necessary to meet these challenges, but clearly disagreed that the proposal being consulted upon was a correct route to do so. The most significant issues raised after the proposal included the arrangements for pupils' educational transition including the well-being of pupils and the support that will be available to all pupils, but particularly those with special educational needs. If this proposal were to proceed, then these issues would need to be key priorities for the school leadership. And also, the governing body originally asked for the proposals to be implemented from August 23, but then subsequently considered that August 24 would allow more time for successful transition arrangements to be in place and therefore reduce disruption for pupils and staff. This proposal, if agreed, could allow the whole school community to come together to ensure a smooth transition and the least disruption for the children in both schools, many of whom gave their views in the consultation. This report details the responses to the consultation and asks the executive to authorise the publication of statutory proposals. Should the executive decide to proceed with the process by approving the publication of statutory proposals, this would give another four weeks for the representations to be made by the public. The proposal. The proposal is to amalgamate Cajun College Whitby and Estelle School, resulting in the technical closure of Estelle School and the Estelle site, and increase the planned admission number for the amalgamated school with the effect on the 1st of September 2024. The current admission number for Caveman College Whitby is 184, and the proposed admission number for the newly amalgamated school will be 200. 
whole statutory proposal is set out in Appendix 1A. Happy to take questions, Chair. And can I just ask Amanda or Stuart if anything you want to add at this point? Yeah, thank you. And local member, do you want to uh, come in at this point? Shall I say anything? If you want to just. just could, it's just a catch of the Very flexible. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Chair. Um, I won't make a last speech, but maybe just make a couple of comments, if I may. I think probably everybody around this table is well aware that the, the proposal has been very controversial for the people of Whitby. They're in some ways very divisive, uh, and that's very unfortunate. We need to go forward together in some way, and that has been my intention throughout, to try and bring people together rather than drive them apart. Um, I have to say that when we're looking at blame and responsibility, I think all arms of government, national, North Yorkshire County Council, the District Council, are responsible for the situation that we're in at the present moment, which is that um, due to factors of housing, uh, the economy and other measures, we have a, a reducing working population, which has resulted in the situation that we're in now. And that, I don't think, can be just set aside and said, well, that's separate to the problem in hand. We have to look at the bigger picture, and this pr presumably is the role of the Executive Committee to look at. Now, North Yorkshire Council has responsibility for all those elements, then it has the responsibility also to provide a future for Whitby um, and to, to look at the, the, the difficulties, of particularly around the economy and affordable housing, which has really uh, made the situation much worse. I have to say that um, I started from the point of trying to find a way to make a case for keeping two schools. Um, I, and I, I, I have to say it, it proved impossible. The, the, on the financial elements, um, the surplus places, the budget deficits and the need for providing the best uh, teaching and learning for the pupils in Whitby, uh, it was very clear, I think, that the proposal to amalgamate the schools was necessary. Having said that, I, I don't think that the, the, the book is closed on, on what sort of form that, that, that uh, schools and the sites and the site selection will need to take in the future. And uh, I, I asked you, Councillor Wilkinson, at full council last time, whether there was the possibility to continue that discussion um, about the uh, sites and the uh, possibilities there beyond the ultimate decision on June 20, I think it is, 2023, during this transition period that we've got until the 1st of September 2024. I made the case in the consultation that we should be looking for a new school, a single new school uh, that comes up to modern standards for teaching and learning. It's energy efficient, so that it will reduce the energy costs and therefore the drain on resources that has been the case with the 1950s buildings that are in place at the moment. I would suggest that the proposal which is on the cards for repairs to the schools, in the form, I believe up to a cost of about a million and a half, be paused to look at the possibility of uh, a new school in the future. Uh, I'm grateful to the, uh, the writers of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the report, which includes my proposal for a new school as option E, but it, it, it says that it's impossible uh, at the present time. Well, I would say let's keep it on the, on the, the realms of possibilities going forward um, and see whether another government in the future might look more favourably on funding the, the building of a new school for Whitby along the lines of I have to say that I'm, I, I have asked lots of questions of Amanda's team and I'm, I'm very grateful for all the support and answers to the questions that were provided right the way from the beginning of January, a long four months and lots of questions to you and you, were, you always came up to scratch and in an answer to me very quickly and I, I'm very appreciative of that because I forwarded those answers into the community to provide uh, some of the information that people were asking. Um, I did at the, uh, at the Scarborough and Whitby Area Constituency Committee, I've got to get the names right, um, Though it was, I think, the Area Consultative Committee <laughs> when it met because it was just before April the 1st. But I, I did propose that um, a, a motion which was passed, uh, uh, which was to 
uh, the, uh, the local education authority should fund uh, a special fund uh, to support the parents in the transition, uh, both uh, in terms of the very uh, the elements of that, that will be required of parents and, and, and students, but also in terms of the, the financial costs, because it's proposed that the school has a new name and consequently probably a new school uniform. This is a big cost for a lot of people. Parents have gone through a lot over the last three years. Uh, they, they've, they've had their kids uh, dealing with COVID and lockdown and all that that brought with it. They're now encountering the difficulties of the cost of living crisis, which is, is proving very difficult for many of those parents. I think that there needs to be special consideration. I know you've, in your report you say you will do that prior to a final decision on June the 30th, and I'm grateful for that. But I think there does need to be a pot of money available to the school in order to mitigate the, the, uh, the stresses and strains, but also the financial costs. Um, so on that note, thank you, Chair. Then we want to respond to, to um, that at this point. Just just to say thank you. Thank you, Councillor, for that. Um, some of the things that you've raised today were addressing those responses today, as you know. And yes, um, uh, it has been noted the ATC comments about the uniform and the assistance to the school. So thank you. Stuart. Yes, thank you, Chair. I just thought it'd be helpful to address the issue of a new school. Um, I think many of us would like to see new built secondary schools across um, uh, North Yorkshire. Uh, it's just not in our gift to do that. We, we receive funding for two things. One for capital repair. Um, that money is going down on an annual basis. I think I've just seen a new allocation. This will come through um, um, reporting in normal ways, but I think we have a million pounds a year. We have capital backlogs across the county. We couldn't pull the money out to do school rebuild on that basis. And we have funding for new school places where we have pressing demands in some new spaces. Um, the, the, the responsibility for whole school rebuild sits with the Department of Education. They do have a scheme and a programme around that. We'd have to apply. But to, to pause and wait for that would be decades if we're really frank about the, 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 the um, where Whitby would phase in any national criteria around that. The DFA do have position surveys across the whole of the country and do look at that on an annual basis. Maybe we can still look at that. I wouldn't want to rule out new schools for Whitby in the future, but it would have to go through proper process and be dependent on the DFA and would it be something I'd recommend closing this on at this point. OK, can I open it up now for discussion around the table? Gareth, please. Just, just very quickly, just on the issue of a new school. Um, Stuart, in your professional view, do you think there's a heightened possibility of a new build? Should these proposals be ultimately approved? Does it make it easier to make the case for a new build? Um, it, it, it certainly doesn't hinder it. I'm right in saying No, it doesn't hinder it. Um, in some ways, it, it would be about a single school to meet all the <laughs> rather than two schools, as we currently have. So it, it certainly doesn't hinder it in any way um, that any future proposals around that. OK, just in, in that vein as well, thinking about climate change and the likes, we all know the property footprint is, and if we can reduce that, is the biggest reduction in terms of CO2 emissions and the likes. Um, can you point us to any analysis that these proposals would help towards that? climate change reduction target. There are certainly, in terms of the financial planning, uh, reduced costs and heating costs from a single school site than multiple school sites yet. OK, yeah. and finally, I think it's been said before, but just for clarity, these proposals were not brought by the local education authority initially. They were requested by the school governors. That's right. That in, saying that, and in, in saying that, can I just pay a compliment to, I think you said they were, they were the co-chair of the governing body in the way that you presented uh, today. I was, And this is a comment. I was particularly struck. I think you said that you've got a child in both Estelle and Cademan. Did have. Yeah. Um, I was particularly uh, struck by uh, something she said about the broader curriculum uh, that perhaps... 
one site school could offer. Uh, so that that is just a passing comment. Greg, please. Thank you, thank you, Luda. Uh, I just like to say that normally when we consider making a decision to close a school, it's a matter of real regret and sadness, and we're really unhappy that it's, it, it's come to this. But I think today is quite different. I'm convinced that the proposal we've got today will actually improve education provision in Whitby. I, too, was very impressed with what Ms. Crossland had to say. We only have insufficient pupils in Whitby to justify two schools, and that, there's no prospect of that changing. This proposal will give the town a financially stable secondary school, able to provide a wider curriculum than is currently the case. And it'll also help us to secure sixth form provision in Whitby, so people are not forced to travel to Scarborough, Gisborough, Pickering, if they want to uh, continue their education post-16. I think this is a, a very good proposal, something that's good for the pupils of Whitby, and we should be happy to be supporting it. It's a, it's a great thing. Right. Derek, please. Uh, thank, thank you, Lane. Um, I was pleased to hear that uh, Carlton said the door wasn't closed on regarding the new school, and it's quite right that it stays open. Mm -hmm. and it's always investigated to see if the funding is available. I'd like to congratulate Annabelle and officers on the way they have handled this request, and it was a request to support. Councillor Dad's um, support there. It's been a very emotive and, and delicate subject. But I do feel by embedding the schools, it, this will offer a tremendous opportunity, um, education opportunities for the children in, in and around Whitby area. Fully supported. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. David, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, this is a very difficult one for me because uh, I am a Whitby councillor. I, I have sympathies on both sides. But for me, the principal consideration here is the education available to our children rather than the buildings. Um, our children need a chance to thrive. They need a, a curriculum that is as broad as possible. And for that reason, um, I, I see the sense in the proposals that are coming forward. Something has been made of the, um, the, the playing facilities uh, and the 3G uh, up at um, Estale School. I think we'll find that um, there's very little we can do about that anyway, because it's got, it'll be governed by uh, grant conditions from the Sports Council and the National Playing Fields Association regulation. So I don't think there's any risk to those facilities at all. Uh, one thing that I would ask um, um, officers to look at uh, and uh, is that uh, when we talk about the safety of children crossing over to the Scoresby site, there is um, the possibility of doing a link down along the cinder track, which would take them under the main road and they could then access the site there. It would, it would, it would, uh, there would be some cost in lighting and, and putting pavements in or uh, walkways, but um, it, it's a possibility. There is a direct link. David, Janet, please. Uh, thank you, Leader. I'm in something of a unique position here because for a good many years, I actually taught as a visiting teacher at all three of the secondary schools in Whitby. The school buildings were all really different from each other, and this gave a really different feel to each of the schools. It was also the only time in my teaching career that I actually taught in the middle school system. Frequently, pupils that I'd taught in small groups at the separate Esdale and Cademan schools were then regrouped together when they moved on at, eight, at age 14 to the then community college, and they worked pr productively when they were put together in those, in those amalgamated groups. The community college obviously catered for 14 to 8 year olds. It was successful and I always enjoyed teaching at that school, indeed all of the Whitby schools. Cultures are really important. Even the microcultures between very different locally schools in, in a similar area. But culture is all, all, also dynamic. And children and young people, in my experience, are not only remarkable at adapting to those changes, but with a little encouragement, they are also well-placed to grasp the opportunities that arise from them. We've just heard quite explicitly from the co-chair and the governors 
that the two schools are struggling with low numbers, which is creating a financial challenge and narrowing the curriculum able to be offered. And I think we've all, every, every member around this table has pointed that out. But also, sadly, this scenario is one that we've seen in some of our very rural schools. And we know what the consequences are if we don't address that, those problems at this stage. The partnership governing bodies have put forward the proposal in front of us because they recognise that the schools are stronger together and that the amalgamation would offer opportunities to the young people of Whitby that they could not realise as separate schools. I think we're all unanimous in saying that. But I also want to say that with my own portfolio in mind, we know that more young people are being identified in the SEND bracket. We've heard that the proposal would develop an inclusion hub pulling together the work of the SEND teams, alternative provision and targeted mainstream provision, and it would pull them all together. And that in itself would give opportunities for new ways to offer a more bespoke offer to support young people with these additional needs. So I acknowledge the responses to the consultation, but I do think we have to explore these proposals to give the young people of Whitby surety of education and the opportunities that they bring with them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, yeah, just, you know, on reflection, perhaps I more of a general comment. Um, just make reference to the local, is it Councillor Swanick? Swan Swanick. <laughs> And, and, you know, to be honest, there was little that we could disagree with, although I, I, I mean, you know, a future government that may well provide funding for a school in Whitby. I mean, that that um, windfall tax on, on the oil companies has been spent 50 times over, I think, in the last six months. But that's, we'll put that aside. I think generally we're, we're with him. And I, I, I know that he more or less supported the proposals as set out today, but he did raise a very important point, and that's about numbers, and that's about housing, is it not? We've done our bit. Unfortunately, the levelling up bill didn't get through, so the second homes premium can't be um, ruled out uh, 12 months hence. It looks as though it's going to be two years hence, and that's a, a real problem in Whitby, as we know, and elsewhere on the coast. But also, we've got to carry on doing our bit as a housing authority and planning authority, because it is houses that are needed. It's houses that are needed to support those local public services, the schools and, and all the rest of it, as we know. So I suppose I've said it before at full council, but I will, I make no apologies for repeating it. Next time there's a housing application for a substantial number of houses, uh, both low cost, social, and private. I look forward to some local members, and I exclude yourself, sir, please, um, uh, not uh, attempting to find a reason to oppose it, because we do all know that um, it, 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 it is the foundation of building sustainable communities in the medium. Anybody else want to come in? David, and then I'll bring in Councillor Hassan. I would support what Gareth says there about housing, but uh, unfortunately in Whitby we have a unique problem in that most of the houses that are built are bought as second homes, uh, and uh, and we know we know the implications of that, and and possibly um, I, I would be requesting that the portfolio holder for planning look at um, a primary use clause sometime in the future. I think, we think we've taken steps to address that. We're just waiting for the government now to uh, fall into line with us. Paul. Thank you, Chair. Uh, although I can't help really resolve this particular issue, which, having gone through school this year, I understand the difficulties and the emotions and all those things. One of the things I, I would like to propose, though, is that going forward, and particularly with the geography that we have in North Yorkshire, is that we actually look at how we can use blended learning to offer wider curriculums and to keep what schools open in these in these small communities. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, we can take that on board, but let's be careful that we're not starting to predetermine what this uh, what the outcome of the consultation is. That is the decision before us this morning. Are we going to approve a further round of co of consultation? That said, I think I'm with Greg on this. I think this could be a very positive step for the future in, in Whitby um, and you know we must move on from the past happy though those memories are of the past 
um, but we are talking about approving a consultation this morning. Anything else? So, anybody else want to come in on this item? No, in that case, Annabelle, could I ask you to move the recommendations, please? And because we're streaming the meeting, could you actually read them out? Yes, Chair. Could, could I just reiterate, though, that this has been a very emotive consultation, and I'd like to thank everybody, everybody that has contributed. Thank you. Um, so to move the recommendations at 14.1, it is recommended that one, statutory proposals and notices be published on the 27th of April 2023, proposing the amalgamation of Cavan College Whitley and Estelle School, resulting in the technical closure of Estelle School and the Estelle site on the 31st of August 24, and an increase in the planned admission number for the amalgamated school with effect from the 1st of September 2024. Two, the executive schedule taking a final decision on these proposals on the 20th of June 2023. Three, the recommendation from the Area Constituency Committee be noted. If the decision is made to proceed with these proposals, the executive will be required to consider the recommendation in conjunction with these proposals at the appropriate time if the proposals are published and this returns for a decision to close the school on the 20th of June 2023. Okay, thank you, Is that seconded, Janet? Okay, so can I ask for a formal show of hands on this then? Okay, thank you. That is unanimous. So thank you for that. Let's move on then to item six, which is the appointments report. Can we just note uh, the change on the health and wellbeing board? Yeah, okay. And then item seven is the area constituency committee fee. Anybody got any observations? The executive. George, you want to make some comment? Thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, leader and members of the executive committee. Uh, please bear with me as I set out uh, the, out the background of this issue because it has been a big concern for our community for the past eight months. Uh, basically, I would like to highlight today a theme that appears in two of the reports of the area constituency committees, and that is the lack of banking and postal services in rural areas. Uh, the report from the last uh, Skipton and Ripon Area Constituency Committee's meeting highlight the issue of closure of bank branches in market towns. And uh, their local MP, Julian Smith, was quoted saying in response to a question about the closure of a bank branch in his constituency that it's uh, he was referring to the bank that they don't seem to care. The same issue about the lack of postal and banking services was also discussed in the first Canmolton Area Constituency Committee a couple of weeks ago. That was triggered because in Helmsley, we have been affected by sudden closure of the post office there, which had a significant impact not only on businesses, but also on many residents, uh, some of whom are vulnerable and elderly, and uh, that has caused a serious concerns for us. Uh, the post office, and it happened last summer, so it's been now. The post office initially said that this will that the post that they would reopen within seven days. Then it was two weeks. In uh, September, on the eighth, uh, I got an email saying we can say with a high degree of confidence that the post office would reopen on September, September the 9th, that was the next day. And then later they changed their mind that they said next week. And until now, we still don't have an answer. We've done everything as we can as a community. We asked for a temporary solution. The post office initially said no to this, but then after we had a protest, they introduced a temporary solution, which was not ideal, but it was better than nothing. Despite the significant demand on that service, the post office then stopped it, saying that they have a permanent solution that will be introduced very soon. But again, we have Christmas, a very important time of the year for local businesses and also for residents who want to send cards to their loved ones 
around the world and nothing happened. We had a petition. The BBC came to have interviews with to see the plight of the local residents. And uh, the, this is why it was raised in the recent area constituency uh, committee. And the only line we are hearing from the post office is that they keep repeating their apologies and saying that there is an answer, uh, there is a retailer who is interested and that the post office services will be resumed very uh, soon. So I just wanted to flag it up here because the post office has massively overpromised and under-delivered. And I think that the level of inconsistency and incompetence uh, is not genuine because I think actually, as the MP for Skipton and Ripon, Julian Smith said, this is because they seem, they don't seem uh, to care. And I discussed this with you, Leader, and also with Councillor Sanderson and uh, why before, but I think it's essential to highlight it today, given the report we have, and given that there are so many vulnerable and elderly residents in our community who desperately need physical not online, postal, and banking services. Thank you. Okay. Derek, you wanted to respond? Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Leader. Um, and it may assist uh, Councillor Jabbar. Sorry, can I just intrude? I'm really sorry, Derek. I didn't declare an interest at the start of this meeting because I didn't see anything on the agenda that would mean I needed to, but I work for a bank. Now, I don't normally... I seek a dispensation when we deal with Treasury matters, Am I OK staying in the meeting? You work for a good bank that isn't withdrawing branches. <laughs> well, the fact that we're having this discussion leaves me uncomfortable. I think you need to declare your interest now and say what you're interested about, you work for a bank and you can stay. OK, well, if you can record that in there. Sorry to interrupt you where Councillor Baster went, but I was concerned for my position. Thank you are the Mayor of Harrogate. I'm honoured to, <laughs> to be interrupted by you, sir. Um, and it may assist Councillor Jabbar that... Um, going back a couple, of years, a couple of years, we at Corporate Partnership over the Young Scotland Committee looked into um, the provision of rural banking and post offices, etc. And I feel sure if you have a word um, with Melanie, uh, Councillor Jabbar, she will be able to provide you with the minutes of that meeting, which involved um, correspondence with the relevant minister at the time. Thank yes. you. We had it as part of the ACC committee meeting as well. But thank you very much. It's suggested in the minutes from that meeting that the um, overall issue could be the subject of a scrutiny review. And I think I said at the time, we can't tell scrutiny what to do. But presumably, you'll be raising that with the relevant scrutiny committee, George. Indeed. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Anybody got anything else then? Um, Paul? Just a, a point of information on 3.4.7. Suggest that the next few years we have to So uh, it actually applies to all combined sewage out uh, in, in the ocean waters area between now and the end of 2025. It was just so that it was clear. Okay, thank you, Paul. So, anybody got anything else on reports from any constituency committees? Recommendations just that we note it and consider any matters arising. I think we've got a sense of what the matters arising are. I'll move on then to the forward plan. David, anything we should be aware of? Um, not really, Chairman. The one thing that, that you're aware of as well is uh, that uh, we will be looking at community networks uh, at the meeting on the 30th of May. I'm not sure that it's in this report yet. Okay, thank you. And then that brings us to the final item. I haven't been notified of any other business today. So with that, thank you for your attendance and your contributions. And I thank once again the uh, speakers who came to give us their views. Okay, so with that, I declare the meeting closed.